The Pittsburgh Steelers get a big win against the Denver Broncos, winning 27-19 at Heinz Field. It snaps a three-game losing streak, brings the team to two and three, and gives a little bit of hope that there's some building blocks to move forward on the season. I'm Chris Carter, the host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. We're about to break it all down right here on the show. First, I want to thank you, all the listeners out here, for making Locked On Steelers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, whether it's YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or Odyssey. I'm Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily news of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. Guys, welcome to Victory Monday. It's been a while, right, since week one that we've had one of those here in in Steelers Nation. But it's it's one to enjoy for sure. Uh, Heinz Field was electric. I got to say to all the Steelers fans who attended, that was a special renegade. uh, You know, at the end, if you didn't get it, really get to see it on television. The, The Heinz Field crowd showed up and showed out. Uh, when they played Renegade in that two-minute drill on the Broncos in the fourth quarter, it was loud. The towels were twirling. And when James Pierre intercepted that pass to close out the game, uh, it was a huge, huge eruption from the crowd. I think a lot of people feel like, man, this, this Steelers team is just a little bit away from putting some things together. But this was a special win because I think it really put together some of the building blocks of what Mike Tomlin has been talking about to make this team a complete team. Now, we've, we, we've all known the offense has been on the major struggle bus, but for a second week in a row, they've come out and scored on in their opening possession of the game. That was something that we had talked about them struggling for week. They hadn't done it before week four. They hadn't done it until week 10 of the, of the 2020 season, but it's been coming the same way to back to two back to back deep touchdown passes to Deontay Johnson in single coverage. Uh, this time coming in a 50 yard touchdown pass where Ben Roethlisberger dropped it in a bucket. I, I really thought then this is a big deal. I, I really thought Ben Roethlisberger was able to, to see the field at the best that he has all season. Yes, there were some throws that he threw that should have been interception. They're intercepted. There, there were at least two, maybe three that he threw that the Broncos should have picked off. And if they did, it changes this game entirely. But those things happen. You know, Mika Fitzpatrick almost came, came up with one against Aaron Rodgers. You know that these things happen, and when you when they do, how do you capitalize on them? That's often what determines your career, your success in a game. But I think the biggest factor in this Steelers win is what Mike Tomlin's been preaching, complimentary football, the defense, backing up the offense, the run game, working with the pass game, helping each other out, being there and having some balance to the team. That has, hasn't been something that you've seen in, in either of the three losses from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And in this game, it definitely sh- definitely showed up. The defense came out on fire, shutting things down for the Broncos. I think they only had 19 yards in the first quarter. They were locking it down, but then suffered some injuries. We already knew that they were missing guys with Cam Sutton. Uh, they're still missing, you know, Stephon Tewitt and guys like that. But uh, the big, you know, you know, you know, it got worse when Devin Bush was was knocked out of the game. He had a groin injury. I know groins are just insane right now with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But they, you saw Teddy Bridgewater say, okay, now they have to do a lot more. And Mike Tomlin admitted, like, we were doing a lot to cover up you know what? You know, you know what Cam Sutton does because don't forget, Cam Sutton plays outside corner slots, a little bit of safety here and there, and that takes up multiple roles in the defense. Well, when he's out, you have to kind of deploy different looks to cover that up, and that means new communication, new guys to work, new chemistry that has to be involved. And then when Devin Bush goes out, it it's gonna it's gonna change that even more. And when Devin Bush went out, that's when you saw the Broncos start to march the ball. They had back to back touchdown drives, and uh, they were in the red zone to close out the game uh, and had a chance to score, but the defense you know, holding them out four straight plays and then James Pierre getting an interception to close out the game. What a big time. We're going to talk about James Pierre a little bit more because I know Tony Serino, that's his guy and he's super proud of him. But again, the complimentary football, it can't be said, you know, be said enough. Ben, again, Ben, 
didn't wasn't asked to do a whole lot in this game. 15 of 25, 253 yards, two touchdown passes, and two very good touchdown passes, by the way. I asked him about the Chase Claypool one, and he was like, you know, he, he talked about how it's good having Chase Claypool lined up in the slot and getting him some inside matchups. He, you know, the, the Broncos had to respect Deontay Johnson going one way and while Claypool went the other. So all he knew is he knew. He's like, hey, I just got to look the safety off, and Claypool's going to have a chance to go to score up the middle. He did just that. Big play from Ben Roethlisberger. I think that this was a sign. This is what I've been saying on and all. So, you know, people will get on me because I get on Ben Roethlisberger, and I'm very honest about my evaluations of him. But my problem, my, my thing is it hasn't been his arm. I'm not, I'm not like ESPN saying he doesn't have the arm anymore. Or he can't, he just can't play the game anymore. I, I think it's mainly been mental. It's mainly been, you know, going through his progressions, checking out of things that need to be checked out of and reading what defenses are doing. He hadn't been doing that efficiently. I thought he did that much better in this game, and this could be a building block for him mentally to get back into where he was early last season because early on in the last season he was processing defenses picking through people and, and finding the open holes to let his playmakers be playmakers we'll, we'll get to those playmakers in a sec obviously big playmaker in this game Najee Harris 23 carries 122 yards and a touchdown on the ground it's his first 100 yard game of his career in the NFL big ups to him he had a really good touchdown where he le leaped over the defensive line and you just saw him just chugging along and chugging along and Big ups to the offensive line because this was a Broncos defense that ranked fifth in rushing defense coming into this game. They were they were known as a stout defensive front. Yes, they're missing Bradley Chubb, but Vaughn Miller held to two tackles, no quarterback hits, no tackles for loss, no sacks. I know a lot of people get on Chikuma core for, and he did have a false start that was rough in that game, but he bounced back in a big way this week. Trey Turner gave him a lot of props in the post-game press conference. You can go check out my Twitter account, uh, at Carter Critiques. I posted videos of, his, of what he said, Ben Roethlisberger said, and Mike Tomlin said after the game at Heinz Field. Um, all of them kind of being complimentary ac across the board. Trey Turner talking about how this was a big week of practice for Chukuma Core for Ben Roethlisberger talking about, hey, we challenged the offensive line to be better in the run game, better in the pass game, and they stepped up to that call, and they absolutely did. The offensive line was getting the push down the field. You saw Kendrick Green uh, you know, being able to get down the field, get chipped to the next guy, working with Kevin Dotson, who also had a really good game. Dan Moore, same thing. Um, you know, th this was a, this was a group effort. And this is what I mean by complimentary football. The run game was working. The passing game started feeding off of the run game. It opened up more of those short passes because as I've been saying this whole time, if you're not going to, if you're not, if you're going to throw those short passes, you need to start putting those guys that are in the intermediate spaces into guessing games. And when Najee Harris is getting four, five, six yards on first down, like he was in this game, it's going to force linebackers, slot cornerbacks, safe box safeties to start to freeze a little bit when they know Najee Harris is back there. And then that opens up Chase Claypool a slant over the middle, Deontay Johnson a slant over the middle and giving you more options. And that lets Ben Roethlisberger play with it a little bit more. So big play by their part. The defense, not creating a whole lot of splash plays, but they were dominant in a lot of a lot of different phases of, of, of this game. Uh, when you looked at how they were winning in situational football, that spoke a lot to how they played in this game. They allowed two third down conversions out of 12 third downs all game. For the Broncos, they were consistently, you know, disrupt disruptive. They were breaking up passes. They were getting in the backfield. Didn't sack, t uh, didn't sack Teddy Bridgewater a lot, but they caused enough problems for him. I'm going to get into more about what caused those problems because it was a bit of a matchup thing the Steelers did to cause that. But first, I got to tell you guys about DirecTV Stream. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another device that lets you stream your favorite shows, and then you're watching your sports highlights on your phone, and then you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. Well, I wanted to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more by going to directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible requ uh, device required. Content varies by package.
Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, keeping it rolling here on your Pittsburgh Steelers, getting a big 27-19 win over the Denver Broncos. We thank you again for making us your first listen in the in your, in the day uh, on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Now, continuing to talk about what this team did right. I, I mean, again, can't speak enough for Najee Harris. That young man's a warrior. He came out at the end of the game with cramps, you know, bumps and bruises, as Mike Tomlin will call that. But you saw him reading and processing the field, making big plays when they're there. The running lanes are starting to open up. Remember, and locked on Steelers fans, you've been listening for the longest time now. You've been you've been hearing me say week eight, week nine. That's right around when I think this offensive line is going to start to figure things out, and you're going to start to see that running game open up. Well, guess what? It's week five. And last week, I thought that they were making strides to it. The problem was they were playing Aaron Rodgers, and he doesn't let you really get your ground game going when he's putting points up on you. But in this game, the offense got up early, made some big plays, and then you saw Najee Harris, that running game, coming in, win four yards, five yards, six yards in first down. And when you look at the Steelers' offense, we talked about winning, winning situational football on the other side. They were able to win it on, on offense as well. They were 7 of 12 on third downs. What went into that? When I asked Mike Tomlin that question, he talked about winning the first and second downs, making it better situational football when you get to those third downs. All of that played into the Steelers' success in this game. A ton of credit for how they drew up this game plan. Again, back to the defense here. A lot of people are going to look at this game and they're going to be like, "Whoa, the the the, St the Steelers really didn't do much when it came to when it when it came to the defense uh, because they only had two sacks, or it came to the pass rush. They only had two sacks in this game. They came from Devin Bush and Henry Mondo. You no, know, no T.J. Watt. Where was he? But go back and look at the tape. The Broncos were doing a lot to try to protect Teddy Bridgewater. And remember, Mike Mike Munchak, that's that's the offensive line he'd been coaching, but. Also, you go back and look at some a lot of the plays. T.J. Watt getting bumped from a tight end before two offensive linemen would collapse on him. They were doing everything they could to limit the Steelers' pass rush. And in doing so, they gave up. The Broncos gave up one of their biggest playmakers, Noah Fant. Mike Tomlin talked about after the game when we asked him, hey, you know, what were how did you guys limit Noah Fant? He was like, well, actually, we, we planned for them to use him in protection a lot, and they did. They didn't trust their offensive line to simply give Teddy Bridgewater a whole bunch of time, so they left Noah Fant in protection a lot more often than usual, and that that, that forced them to say, hey, you got to win with your wide receivers, Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick and, and, and Deontay Spencer, and that put the offense in a bind until late when the Steelers, they were start, starting to go to lose their depth because of injuries, and you saw Teddy Bridgewater start to find some openings, but that went into why they were so protected. That's kind of the counterbalance of what you can do with a defense when you have a pass rush like that. If you're forcing a team to give up one of its most athletic weapons in a tight end like Noah Fant, that means you're still doing something right. It may not show up on the stat sheet, but you're but you're forcing a team to go away from a strength and it allows your defense to kind of make some more plays. Now, you still wish that at some point your defense had created some turnovers earlier in the game, but one thing that Teddy Bridgewater has been, and I've, I've been a, a fan of his for a long time since his days at Louisville, he protects the football. He, he's a, he's a, he, you know, I don't want, I don't want to disparagingly call him a game manager, but he's always been a smart, heady quarterback that he takes what's there. He doesn't make the big mistake that crushes you, and he gives you a chance to fight until the very end. And uh, he did that for the Broncos. He gave him a chance until the Steelers just played a really good four down series in the red zone when the Broncos needed to score and then get a two point conversion. James Pierre coming up with a huge interception in the game also shout out to james pierre if you're a fan of the show you also know tony serino tony tuesdays he's been banging that james pierre drum for weeks no excuse me months it's back in march i want to say when he started saying like look james pierre he's the next guy now he will say wild things he will say he's the peyton manning of cornerbacks he will say he's you know he's a future hall of famer garrett first ballot hall of famer um, and, and silly things like that. But Tony did text me. He said, this is the week James Pierre gets his first interception. And he doesn't text. He hasn't texted that to me. Yet. This is the first time that, that Tony Serino has ever texted me that. And it came in the biggest of moments. And I, I want to say this, a, a lot of people, and I tweeted this, like he got beat bad on a touchdown pass to Cortland Sutton one-on-one. -on -one, and that's the second time he got burnt like that. Cause he got burnt by Jamar chase like that, uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, so a lot of people were like, man, James Pierre, He's not that good. He's a bum. They call him all sorts of names. And I was like, I don't go bum as far. I will say he needed to do better on that play. But young cornerbacks get beat. And he's a, he's a second-year undrafted guy. 
He's gonna be. He's gonna make mistakes. He's gonna get beat. Those happen. But how does he bounce back? Does he keep his head? Because that's one thing that Artie Burns, a first round cornerback from years ago, when he would get beat, Artie would go into his shell. He would start doubting himself. He wouldn't know what to do, and then he'd compound it with more mistakes, and you'd see him fall into a pit of despair that it took forever to drag him out of. James Pierre didn't do that in this game. Also, a play that I think a lot of Steelers fans are going to overlook when uh, Javante, I think it was Javante Williams, had a big run. They went down to the one-yard line. Uh, they, they, the Broncos caught the Steelers. Uh, they kind of ran a fake up the middle and then a pitch out wide, and Alex Highsmith kind of missed his gap. Williams broke off, and he almost scored a touchdown if it wasn't for James Pierre not giving up on the play, tracking him down and dragging him down at the one yard line that led to a false start or excuse me a delay a game and then after the delay a game they were able to get some big plays Devin Bush had a sack it, it forced the Broncos into a field goal that's a that's a huge four point turnaround uh you know you know going from in, a touchdown where he could have walked into the end zone into a field goal that kind of was the Broncos you know being in a situation where they needed to respond earlier it's plays like that that show me James Pierre is a fighter he's a warrior he's coming through in waves for this team and he again he's young evaluating him as just like a, this is who he's always going to be I think is a big mistake and, and I think I say that with a lot of young players across the NFL he's still figuring out who he is as a cornerback and uh and on that last play, it wasn't just the fact that he had the interception. He was on Cortland Sutton all the way around. He never gave up on the play. Teddy Bridgewater bought some time hit his and, and tried to hit his man, but he threw it. James Pierre was all over that pass. Heck of a day from him. Other guys that I thought had good, good, good days. There was one play, Minka Fitzpatrick, on, in fact, on that long run, uh, he took a bad angle. But 10 tackles, was flying all over the field, had a tackle for loss. Minka Fitzpatrick, you know, he's still, he's still making plays back there. I know people are like, well, where's the big play interceptions? Again, he had a blocked field goal that was returned for a touchdown last week that should have counted, but the NFL wiped that out. But I felt like he also played a solid game on the back end as well. Other unsung guys, Joe Schobert, I thought had a really solid game, had some good run stuffs. Um, uh, Terrell Edmonds, an eraser. He just, you put him on the field, he does a really good job, just quietly, not, you know, you won't see him make the elite plays and make the highlights, but he, like Devin Bush when he's out there, making a difference. And also, again, Devin Bush, he only had one tackle in this game. But you know, and it was his and it was his sack. Um, but uh, when you you know when you look at what he does for this defense, it's often things you know he makes it so that quarterbacks don't target the, the the middle of the field as much. He makes it so that the Steelers can bank on Devin Bush covering the middle of the field and that they can put their their assets in different places. Minka Fitzpatrick doesn't have to back up the inside linebacker as much when Devin Bush is on the field. The slot cornerback can worry about being a slot cornerback instead of saying, "Hey, I gotta be slot cornerback." And I got to help out the inside linebacker position because they don't have a guy that covers like they did when they had John Bostick, Avery Williamson, Vince Williams, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Devin Bush and Joe Schobert, they make that happen. When when Devin Bush went out, you saw that the defense was kind of stretched a little thin, and that's when Teddy Bridgewater started to breathe life into the game for the Broncos. Again, it's not always about the stat sheet. It's about watching the tape and seeing what does a player do on a given rep to take away what an opponent does. I think Devin Bush does that does that very well. Um, other guys, I thought that played well. Chakuma core for again working against Vaughn Miller. Thought he had a big he, he had a big game. Um, you know, as far as as far as the receiving game, I thought guys did their jobs when they were called upon. Pat Fryermuth had only two catches for seven yards, but he had a big third down conversion. Uh, I think they're going to start working the ball to him a little bit more. Chase Claypool. Five catches, 130 yards, and a touchdown. Fantastic job. And, again, he was targeted on six times. That first pass, I thought he should have came down with it. It, it, was, a, it was a good ball from Ben Roethlisberger down the sideline. Uh, but he more than redeemed himself with the way that he played in this game. He had a 59-yard catch. Also, um, I, I thought this was a good response, and, and we'll, do, we'll, we'll do this before we head off to the next segment. When Juju Smith-Schuster went down with a shoulder injury, by the way, he's in the hospital uh, being evaluated. It's not like anything like super serious, but it looks like, you know, something may be broken or, or a separated shoulder, something that's like that's going to take serious being looked at. But when he took a big hit from Kareem Jackson, Kareem Jackson took his helmet off and was talking a lot of smack. You can see it on the field. He was barking towards Juju Smith-Schuster, who was hurt on the play. And you, you can see physically he was just in pain and you know how tough juju is he's taking hit after hit he runs guys over he gets real physical and when he when he does that he's taking a lot of pain but he's rolling with it he's been that tough guy so for him to feel that kind of pain that's a lot kareem jackson bronco safety number 22 that was doing a lot of talking after that play but the steelers did not feed into it the very next play chase claypool catches a pass over the middle and runs past vaughn miller and then here comes kareem jackson over the middle trying to make a tackle 
he gets a move put on by Chase Claypool, and then as he runs by him, Chase Claypool just stiff stiff armed him into the tur- into the dirt, and then Claypool's off on a fifty nine yard catch and run that set up the Steelers for another score. A big play from them, and a big mature response to when one of your one of your better players goes down to a major injury, and the other team's kind of taking credit for it like like that, not feeding into it, but staying focused to your game plan and moving on. That's the sign of a disciplined team, and. Again, Chase Claypool, a second-year player. A lot of there's four starters on the, on this offense that are rookies. Uh, I, I I give them a lot of credit for how they responded to moments like that throughout this game. There's other points I want to talk about here as the Steelers continue to try to bounce back from their three-game losing streak off of this win. They have building blocks here. What are those building blocks? We'll get to those shortly. But first, I got to tell you guys about Built Bar. If you want a healthy treat that tastes like a candy bar, Built Bar is the protein bar for you. It's the official protein bar of the U.S. Track and Field team. It comes in so many different flavors. Whether you want a fruity snack like raspberry, strawberry, or orange or something different like salted caramel, cookies and cream, Rocky Road, my personal favorite, double chocolate, or even co- real cookie dough. Uh, I only got like a couple more of these left built bar, so uh, okay, I'm going to need to order some more from y'all, but these are really good. and I like them out the fridge, uh, but the best part is that all of these are healthy. They range from 130 to 180 calories. They pack 17 to 18 grams of protein, but only four to five grams of sugar and four to five grams of net carbs. So instead of me going and getting some chips or something that's going to not be healthy for me and, and, and mess up my diet, I go to built bar because it's healthy. It's light but it's also it's, it's also packing the protein that i need to get me through my day and, and gives me that energy order today and get your favorite flavor delivered right to your door by going to built.com use the promo code locked 15 that's l-o-c-k-e-d-1-5 locked 15 and you'll get 15 percent off your next order again that's promo code locked 15 for 15 percent off at built.com Wrapping things up here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter, your host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. Follow me, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Let's look at this game and what it means for the Steelers because now they've stopped the bleeding. And, and, they, and what was the title of my podcast on Friday, the episode? If you remember, this was no time to panic. Mika Fitzpatrick said it, TJ Watt said it, Mike Tomlin said it. They are not panicking. And they didn't panic. They played their style of football and won this game. And they didn't even play their best style of football. The defense, I, I think if Devin Bush is healthy, they probably closed this game out a lot sooner than they did. If Ben Roethlisberger and Najee Harris, if Najee Harris is still in the game late, I think they also closed this game out a lot sooner than they did. Um, I also think that if Juju Smith is healthy, it allows them to do a little bit more in the passing game. And I think Ben Roethlisberger you're starting to see the building blocks of him getting his mental game back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. All of these are moving towards this, what the Steelers need to look like this year. That's why I still haven't given up on them having a chance to be a big, a big team this year and a big contender in the AFC. I truly think this defense can be really special. The problem is they've just been hurt up. Now we did know that Stephon Tewitt did practice this past week. So he's looked like he may be on his way back. I'm not saying next game or even before the bye week, but I do think that you will see Stephon Tewitt at some point this season. If you can get him back healthy, maybe after that bye week, after the after the Seattle Seahawks game, yeah, um, even if he's not healthy, if you can just get a, a you know TJ Watt at 100, percent Alex Highsmith at 100, percent Devin Bush at 100, percent your whole defense back and Cam Sutton back. It gives you that chance to play the dominant style of football that you've wanted to play. The Steelers are not trying to become an aired out defense. If you saw the you know the, the Chargers and Browns game, the way that Justin Herbert throws the ball, you're not trying to do what they did, but you're trying to play more old school type of football. Run the ball well, which they're starting to do play really good defense, which we know they can, and have Ben Roethlisberger make the big plays when they're there. Not trying to force the issue by throwing into double coverage, but hey, saying, hey, you know what? We're going to catch these guys lacking where they're soft in, when they're softest in, in their coverage. And he did that in this game. You know, again, 15, 15 completions on 25 attempts. That 25 attempts, that's a perfect range for Roethlisberger. I, if I'm the Steelers, I want him between 25 to 35 at most passing during a game because that means you controlled the offense. You didn't need him to throw the ball all over the place. And it also most likely means that you were running the football. Kendrick Green, Kevin Dotson, Trey Turner, Chakuma Korfor, Dan Moore Jr., all of them looking very solid. And again, it looks like we're close to seeing Zach Banner return. And he's the guy that I think that can really boost them out on the edge uh, as an extra tackle out there. So a lot of good things could be turning up for this Steelers team. A lot of people think, that you know, oh, the Steelers, they're done. Ben's washed, Ben's cooked. Again, I don't think Ben Roethlisberger 
is a bad quarterback per se. I think he's played as a bad quarterback. I think that he can bounce back. It's why I won't call him washed. To me, washed means you have nothing left in the tank. You you can't do it anymore. You need to go away uh, right away. You saw in this game some really good passes. That 50-yard bomb to Deontay Johnson was a thing of beauty. I mean, he just he just threw, he threw it on the money. Johnson went and got also. I truly believe Deontay Johnson may be the most underrated receiver in the NFL because he gets separation like nobody's business. You saw in a quick slant, he just cut up the the you know the Broncos defense. And again, this was a very good defense. Patrick Sertan is a very underrated cornerback and, and, and a rookie in the NFL. Kareem Jackson and Justin Simmons, a very good safety pair. Von, Mil- Von Miller, a future first ballot Hall of Famer. This defense Defense has a lot of really good parts to it. I've talked to Cody Work and uh, you know uh, you know about this not just in the off not just in the list this week for our crossover episode with Sarah's about Bettinger as well, but also in the off season on the Locked On NFL podcast when I was breaking down the Broncos with him and your boy Q. So this was a very good showing just to be able to do this to a defense that I believe was allowing what twelve points per game. I'm literally looking this up right now because. Um, you know, when, when you look at when I was looking at it, I'm like, wait a minute, is that really? Yeah, they've allowed 49 points in four games. That's ridiculous. And yes, yes, they haven't played any elite teams. But th- this is the whole point here is that you need to beat these type of teams. This Broncos defense, I truly believe, is talented. But when you look at and you, when you look at the way that the Steelers played this game, the offense handled his business. And were there mistakes that could have led to worse things? Sure. But you could say that about every team every single week. There's plays left out there that kind of that, 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 that if another team ex- exploited them, you would have been behind the eight ball. But the point is, when they don't exploit them, do you capitalize? And in this game, the Steelers did. Mike Tomlin keeping the ship steady. I think that this is a very good sign for where this, this season could go for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but they have to keep building. They next got up the the, the, the Seattle Seahawks with no Russell Wilson. Geno Smith, the presumed uh, number two quarterback there. Russell Wilson missing at least a month because of a finger injury. He suffered on Thursday night football. This could be a major opportunity for the Steelers again at Heinz Field. Sunday night football for them to, to get their season right. They can go three and three, go into the bye week after what was an abysmal start at one and three and it might give them the chance to get healthy, put things together, and be the competitive team we all thought they would be this season. Long way to go there, but we will get there and see who this team truly is in the coming weeks. Thanks again for listening to the Locked On Steelers podcast or watching us if you're on YouTube. We appreciate all of our support there. If you want to support this show, like this video on YouTube. Be sure, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share it with your friends. You can also listen to us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, anywhere podcasts are hosted. Uh, again, we thank all those who want to support us. We have a lot of Locked On Steelers supporters out there. If you're enjoying the show and you're making us your first listen, let us know by hitting me up on Twitter at Carter Critiques. You can also really help us out by leaving a five-star rating and a, with a positive comment on our apple podcast feed when you do that it lets us know that we're doing a great job here in the lockdown steelers podcast with all of our guests and it also gets you a shout out at the end of the show because we like to we like to celebrate the people who celebrate us and and i really appreciate those who've done that there's been some of the really special reviews out there um that have allowed us to do this in fact we have a new one uh this week and like i said if you shout us out with a five-star review with a positive comment i get you a shout on the show this one comes from A person with a lot of X's and C's and V's in their name. It's XCXC. There's a lot of those. But I thank you for your five-star review because you said, love this show. I love listening to this show with my dad. We are all diehard Steeler fans in this family, and this show has a lot to offer for us. Keep up the great work. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much, XCXC. I really uh, I really appreciate you, the five star review there. If you want your shout out, give us a five star review on Apple Podcast as well. I'm Chris Carter. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. You can find this show Monday through Friday during the week. Be sure to check check us out. We got Tony Serino back with us. He'll be doing a Tony Tuesday tomorrow right here on the Lockdown Steelers podcast. Again, I'm Chris Carter. Thanks again for listening. Be back in your ears very soon.